Good evening everyone. It is a warm, humid, overcast day here in Northeast Tennessee. Uh, I figured it would be a good day to make you drive south to the Blue Ridge Mountains to look for some snakes. So hopefully we will be turning up some buzz tails here soon. But yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. I will see you guys when I make it to the Blue Ridge. First snake of the day is this really nice adult female smooth earth snake. Um, these are a fossorial species, so they spend much of their time underground. They like areas with loose, sandy soil and a lot of rock cover. Like this nice, rocky power line cut that we are in right here. Um, now this girl actually appears to be gravid. If you look near her rear end, it's pretty thick. It appears to be swollen. So I would say that is more than her just eating well. She will probably be laying eggs pretty soon. But yeah, a nice little smooth earth snake. These guys are pretty common throughout their range, but here in this area of Tennessee, they can actually be pretty difficult to find. The main thing they like is, you know, a lot of burrowing opportunity. Um, a lot of rock cover, as I mentioned. But yeah, I'm going to be really easy with this girl since she has eggs in her. Uh, put her back under her rock and we'll see what else we can find. I just made it to another power line cut here, and under the first rock I flipped was this nice adult, um, slightly thin, but still pretty good shape, a nice northern ring, ring neck snake. Now if you look closely, you can see the eyes here are actually in the blue. So this guy's in deep shed right now. Um, yeah, nice adult northern ring neck snake. These guys are really common. Oh, and there he goes. But yeah, I'm in this nice rocky power line cut here. We're going to keep flipping these rocks and see what else we can find. Next snake of the day is what I climbed all the way up here to find, and it is the timber rattlesnake. Now this is a really pretty yellow phase individual. This is one of the two more common color phases once you get up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, there are also black phase timbers, and then you'll get occasionally the grayish uh, gray to brown cane break phase individuals but this guy actually appears to have something going on with his eye here i can't tell exactly what it is it's hard to tell but i think his other eye is okay that could be a number of things it could be snake fungal disease which i definitely hope is not up here that'd be very bad because this is at a den site where you typically see a lot of other snakes um, it could just be an injury. I believe it's more than stuck shed on an eye cap. So hopefully it's not, nothing too bad. But otherwise, this is a really clean looking snake. Um, if you're wondering why I'm not getting him out of this rock crevice here, you typically want to leave timber rattlesnakes in their rock crevices or whatever habitat they are in. They are very sensitive to human disturbances. So they prefer heavily wooded areas far away from people. You know, if you poke and prod at them, it can cause individuals to leave the habitat and not come back. So, especially when it's somewhere like this where they hibernate and give birth, you definitely don't want to do that. You want them to feel safe here and, you know, be around for many generations to come. So I'm going to zoom out here just to put into perspective what this guy is. It's tucked away under a rock here. Here's the habitat. But yeah, hopefully there will be some more timbers. We're going to leave this guy right here and see what else we can find. So I just made it through all of the good habitat, and surprisingly I have not seen any other snakes. Um, I believe it's just a bit too early here to see large numbers of timbers at this spot. But yeah, I'm going to leave you guys with this breathtaking view here. I didn't get many clips up here at this spot, so I will be lumping this footage together with whatever I film the next time I go out. So I will see you guys next time. So as you can see from my previous clips, hiking for timber rattlesnakes this time of the year is just not too terribly productive right now. Um, typically it is, but it has been so unseasonally cool and wet getting a lot of rain and where most of the populations in East Tennessee are limited to the higher elevations it's just not a good
good time of year to, you know, hike up on large numbers of them like I was hoping to. But it should be picking up here within the next few weeks or the next month, so I'm not too worried about that. But I am currently driving south to do some night cruising tonight. This is the first night that it has been warm enough and dry enough to really even attempt cruising any snakes here. So I'm really excited, but yeah, I will see you guys when I get down there and hopefully we will see some snakes. This is sending me shit right now. Huh? First snake of the night here is this really attractive Eastern Copperhead, really good sized individual. The road's a little bit wet here, but it seems like it's not phasing these guys. They're just starting to come out. This is the more common of our two venomous snakes here in East Tennessee. So hopefully we'll see a lot more of these tonight and some more snakes, but I'm going to move this little guy off the road here and keep on cruising. So while I was out cruising here, I met up with Jacob and Zach and it started raining here and kind of killed our snake movement. But right here is a nice little long tail salamander. These guys are actually a pretty cool find for down here. Had to quit talking, their motorcycle just passed us. But yeah, these guys are associated with caves. Now, unlike the cave salamander, they like more shell type habitats. You can see where these guys get their name. They have an extremely long tail that is typically almost twice the length of their body as adults. But yeah, really cool little salamanders. As we are heading out in the rain here, we should be seeing some more amphibians. We're going to speed this guy up a little bit here and get him across the road. Oh yeah, they like, once you get them going, they really take off. And there he goes. Yeah, cool little find. Next find of the night is another long tail salamander. This one's slightly shorter, but still has a pretty long tail. Look at his leg. Mm, I think he's just... Yeah, it's just standing okay. on something. But, um, yeah, cool find. The amphibians are definitely out in force tonight. Definitely better than nothing. This is a good find here for this area of Tennessee. But yeah, we're going to let this guy cross the road and keep on cruising. So the snakes are still not moving, but we just cruised this absolutely giant Mammoth. bullfrog here trying to put it into perspective with my hand um, <laughs> you can see it's got this weird appears to be blind here in one eye really weird looking absolute monster of a bullfrog up here on this mountain um, you know American bullfrogs are the largest species of frog we have here in North America really widespread would definitely eat just about anything at this size um, smaller frogs, little snakes, maybe a decays brown snake. <laughs> but yeah, really cool find. We're going to make sure we get this monster off the road so he can live many more years and maybe even get a little bigger and keep on cruising. So we got just got this huge American bullfrog here to sit still in my hand, and this really just puts it into perspective. What a monster! This really is here. I mean, look at that. Bigger than my whole hand. I've never cruised a bullfrog on this road until now. This guy moves really slow. Um, when they get this big, they're sluggish. It's almost like a huge Colorado River toad or something. But yeah, really cool find. You do cruise bullfrogs here and there, but it's, you know, not very often that you see one this huge just sitting out in the road. So definitely makes up for not getting any snakes tonight but we're going to definitely let this guy go now and keep on cruising i've ever seen yep. that's a honey man right here we have the third copperhead of the night I'm gonna run into the for somebody. this little guy right here is just old enough to not have the yellow tail um when these guys are younger obviously they have the little yellow tail on that um fades as they age but yeah nice little i would say a yearling um, copperhead would be fair to say now unlike a lot of snakes these guys will actually move here when it's raining they don't mind the wet weather as long as it's still pretty warm it's actually a pretty common snake to get during 
rains here in East Tennessee. So really gorgeous little copperhead. So look at that pattern. It's almost a flawless um, classic copperhead pattern. So we're going to move this little guy off the road here and keep on cruising. Which way was it going? First rock I flipped has this really uniquely marked little Blue Ridge Dusky Salamander. Now these guys are smaller compared to the other Dusky Salamanders. They are from the Mountain Dusky Complex. So obviously they're found in wet mountainous regions, but occasionally, you know, you will see them up here in the higher elevations. They're actually pretty specialized at that. So once you get up here over 4,000 feet, you don't see many other dusky salamanders, but you will see the mountain duskies and the pygmies. So, cool find. I'm going to move this little guy and put his rock back, and we will see what else we can turn up. Now, under this next log here is actually one of my main targets for today. This is the Weller's salamander. Now, these guys are extremely limited to the high elevations. They prefer spruce fir forest and are typically not found below 4,000 feet. So because of that, they are only found on a few specific mountaintops. Um, you can find these guys below 4,000 feet, but they definitely reach their largest numbers up here. These high elevation um, spruce fir, or in this case, mixed hardwood and spruce fir forest. Um, now this little guy, his tail has obviously been broken off by something possibly a larger salamander could have been any kind of predator really but um yeah i'm gonna try not to bother this little guy too much here and let him go next find of the day is my second target up here in these high elevations this is the northern gray-cheeked salamander now as you can see these guys are really similar to the red-cheeked salamanders that I had in my previous video but the difference is obviously they do not have the red cheeks and they are just the same color all over so these guys are pretty similar to the red-cheeked salamanders they live up here in these high elevation um, you know hardwoods to spruce fir or in this case mixed hardwood and spruce fir but they're really common up here. You'll typically see a dozen or two of these before you get one Weller's salamander or a yawn lossie, which hopefully we will see some yawn lossies later. But yeah, this is an average sized adult here. Really cool little salamanders. You see the burrow right there. It's more than likely going to go right for it. Nope, it jumped over it. But yeah, I'm going to put this guy's log back and keep on flipping. Next find of the day is another one of these beautiful little salamanders that I drove all the way up here to see. Again, this is the Weller's salamander. I have gained a bit of elevation since I've seen the last one. So you typically start seeing more as you get up here higher. Now this one's actually also really pretty. It's got more of a, um, almost a solid gold pattern. It's not got as many little spots in it. And it also has a full tail that has not been broken off, at least not in recent years, as far as I can tell. So, yeah, beautiful little salamanders. There's really no other species that resembles these other than the some of the western anetes. The uh, clouded and wandering salamanders look pretty similar. But you're not going to get that brassy gold weird metallic pattern on too many other salamanders. So these are extremely rare and always cool to see, but... I'm going to let this little guy go here and keep on flipping logs. Here is a nice little triple flip. These are all northern gray-cheeked salamanders. They are obviously the most abundant species up here. Um, I have still only seen one yon lossy salamander and it actually got away from me under a rock. So I'm hoping to get at least one of those before I get out of here. So I'm going to let these little guys go on their way and... Hopefully we'll get something else. So on the way down the mountain, I just flipped this log, hoping to see a yon lossy salamander. I didn't get one, but the two, by far the two prettiest Weller salamanders I have found today were sitting under it. Now I'm not sure, but this little guy right here actually looks like a male. And this big girl here is much thicker. 
you see she has the more unique pattern it's almost striped now she is definitely the largest adult we have seen today you notice she's trying to do the defensive curl there that is common among um, the smaller plethodon now she's on the move but yeah no young lossy salamanders today but definitely killed it with the whalers these are actually much wet, rarer so i'm okay with it um, we will be finding some yon losses in another video but yeah just extraordinary little salamanders i'm going to put these guys back under their log here and call it a day